going on, buddy? Hey, what's going on, Jed? Grant from Fort Free. Hey. What are you doing? Fishing for some parts. <laughs> nice. Those ones real. You got any neat projects in the works? Sure do. 37 WLD. Nice. Little racer. Nice, nice. With the special J hard touch. Yeah. I got a few more pieces to reel in for it, but it's pretty close. Well, hey, Mike and I have been talking and uh, wanted to know if you wanted to be in by the builder for Fort Free this year. Well, yeah. That's awesome, man. I'm super excited. I'm coming out of retirement. All right. JR, come back special. Yeah, come back special. This should be a 68. I'll see you in California. You got it. Best 37 I ever pulled out of this fucker. Most of what I do here is all, you know, pre war uh, Harley. 1936 to 1947 is pretty much what all these fenders are, all these tanks. That's, that's what it is. What I do every day in this shop and what I specialize in and what I'm really known for is doing age baiting. It's helping people finish motorcycles that wouldn't be finished otherwise. Where I'll take, uh, if somebody has a set of pre-war, you know, knucklehead tanks that are Venetian blue and they have some fenders but they don't match the tank, then I can take them, I can match them with the tank. You start learning about like what accessories were on them at what period and what kind of uh, you know what kind of marks they made so when you're replicating that in the patina process like you know what goes there and you've seen it a hundred times and you you know you've seen it a lot so just having one original paint bike that you could look at is not really enough so when you have hundreds of fenders you know that you can look at that are super rare things in your in your in, in your hands it gives you kind of a little bit of an advantage to uh, be able to replicate that look you know I have to step back and look at it and think to myself I think I can't believe all these guys trust me to do this work on their parts. It makes me feel good. And for the first time in my life, I don't feel so much like an imposter. The collectors, the guys that I really respect that have all these things, that is my proof that I, I'm good at what I do. And, and, and it makes me feel good. It's, it's, not just, it's not just a thing where I can brag about it. It's just an accomplishment that I've, I've, I've been looking for for literally decades. And I've wanted to be able to sit back and say, I'm good at what I do, and I can say that now. I, I cut my teeth over on Gasoline Alley uh, with, with a lot of these old guys, and uh, I learned a lot of things on my own, but uh, I, I, I learned most of what I, what I know from guys that have been building race cars uh, long before I was born. In 1945, Harley, uh, Build a prototype bike, maybe two. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Leo Anthony was a popular rider at the time, pretty successful. Another guy named Jimmy Chan. And the bike, uh, as far as we can tell, I guess it was called a WRL. And it was a dual down tube 45, all WLs other than these, were single down tube. And I just really liked the look of that, the beefiness of the front, especially for a race bike. So I wanted to marry these things together. So I've got the top end of a 45 frame and, and basically the cradle of a four speed frame. Because I wanted to run a big twin four-speed, um, you know, something that's just big and brutal and, and it'll, you know, take as much heat as you can put in the engine. There's only so much stuff you can do within a period if you want to keep everything period correct. And uh, really, I just need to kind of be set free from that for a while. I've been bound up in here with, you know, only doing all of this early sheet metal, which I love. I love doing it. But if I'm going to get a chance to build a bike for Born Free, you know, i got to do something that's a little more wild, you know, so... Um, so at the same time, I can keep my credibility with, you know, the early motorcycles, but get to do some more, start with clean sheet metal, start with clean pieces, and, you know, let my ideas kind of, you know, flow. But I've been watching, and I've seen some just really, really talented builders doing this Born Free show. So it's kind of funny, like, you know, coming back and doing, like, custom motorcycles and doing it for the biggest show, like, in the world. It's, it's really cool to, to know that I'm going to go out there with my creation and set it next to some stuff that, you know, to me, some of these guys are kids. 
And uh, but that's not taking anything away from them because there there's some hellacious builders that are very very young, and I'm incredibly impressed with like some of the stuff that I've seen out there. Because I know there's some older guys that are building some some early stuff as well. So it's going to be it's going to be very it's very fun. This is a very fun time for for me. It's a very fun time for my family, and they're getting getting to see me do something that um, that I enjoy doing. I don't take it lightly. I really want to deliver something that's you know quite a good piece and something that everybody will enjoy. And you know, there's something for the old guys. You know, they'll, they'll still they'll they'll be able to pick the pieces out on this thing once it's all said and done. So that with each melody, it just twists. Hi. What are you doing? What's Dad doing? You want to help? Get in here and get stressed out about these bikes. And it seems like these things are so important. You look around and all this pre-war stuff everywhere and like it's very expensive, very rare stuff. But that stuff's not important. People think they need it. They don't need it. What you need is this stuff. Jay works harder than anyone I know to the point that it lands him in the hospital sometimes. We spend lots of nights just eating dinner at the shop or with him sleeping at the shop. Um, we FaceTime most of our conversations. It's how Maya says goodnight to her dad some nights. You know, a week ago, I was laying on a hospital bed in intensive care. When I hear somebody that call me and tell me I really need those parts, you don't really need those parts. When you're laying in a hospital bed, <laughs> You got a tube in your throat, and your family is standing over you crying. You realize, it puts things in perspective, and you realize what you really need is necessary.